Hey everyone, Master King JC and uh, the One Piece chapter came out this week. And our adventures in Fish Island continue. It is manga time. Intro start. <laughs> Yes, um, before I get into the chapter, uh, I noticed that we have a, a special cover right here for the for this week's uh, Shonen Jump. And I just like Luffy, and he's holding like this, um, I think it's a paper mache looking uh, Thousand Sunny ship with, with uh, these little paper cutouts of Chopper and Nami on them. So it was like... Um, it's like this um, uh, thousand sunny thing that you can get inside the magazine if you buy it. So that's neat, I guess. Also, the the logo, the Shonen Jump logo, which is like that pirate thing, is different because it looks like Luffy. Yeah, it has Luffy's face on there. So, yeah, that's neat. And uh, we have a color spread. This color spread is very awesome, action-packed. We got the Straw Hats fighting against a bunch of sharks. And you got uh, Zoro and Sanji like flying it up in air about to attack the sharks. You got Chopper crying, he's scared. And you got Brook. <laughs> you got Brook in the middle of a shark's mouth. He's he's about to be eaten, so he's fucked. <laughs> he's about to be eaten. And you got uh, Frankie's in the water, and Nami and Robin are using him like are using him as a life raft. And Luffy is like in midair about to launch an attack, and Usopp is um. He he just dodged one of the sharks, one of the sharks that were about to bite him. So yeah, Straw Hats versus a bunch of sharks. This is a really awesome color spread. I like it. And um, this chapter is called um, what was it called again? Oh crap! I got to read the title. Uh, let me go backwards. I forgot the title. Um, it's not. Wait. Oh yeah, there it is. Brought by the shark they saved. That's a weird title. Uh, anyway, um, we uh, go like a we go like a few hours earlier into the past. We're in uh, Mermaid Cove, and um, we see what happened to the girls who opened the barrel, which had you know who inside. And the, and when they opened the barrel, uh, you know who came out, but you already know who you know who is. He's um. Yeah, caribou, caribou. Yeah, they opened the barrel and caribou came out. He's like, "Yeah, that'll do finally, my pretties. Naughty, naughty. Don't you go running now." And the girls all scared, and the girls are all scared, and they're trying to run away into the water. But caribou catches them, and we finally figure out what his power is. We finally, we they finally, Oda finally reveals what his power is. Um, apparently, um. Caribou's a swamp, swamp, swamp man. He ate the Numa Numa fruit. Okay, anyway. Yeah, he ate the Numa Numa fruit so he could become a swamp man. And because he's a swamp man, anything that gets stuck to his body, if it, strugg if it struggle, the more it struggles, it, the more it sinks into his body. And his body is basically infinite, so you just keep on sinking and sinking forever and ever. So that sucks ass. <laughs> that sucks. And he uh, captures the mermaids inside of his body, so he can. So he's basically hunted down mermaids now, so he can catch a price at the auction house. Cause mermaids, you know, are, mermaid they sell mermaids. In One Piece, because um, you know they cost a whole bunch of money and stuff and stuff at a uh, Shabri Archipelago. So he's faking the straw hats. He's he's faking the straw hats now because he was able to get into Fisherman Island without being getting into the whole immigration examination thing. So now he's gonna be able to go out around and capture mermaids and all that shit. And um, we go to the Rugo King Rugo. Ru can't say anything today. 
Rugo Kingdom, the port town of Coral Hill. <coughs> Cough. Oh yeah, it was like, oh, the straw had the straw had powers kidnapped the girls from Mermaid Cove, and Mermaid and his girls are like, no, I didn't say that. And like, and she says they were very nice people, and they were Cammy's friends. They couldn't have stolen the mermaids, but they may have been threatened or something like that. And um. And one of the guards like, it's just all the truth that we know. That the only ones there at the time were us guards, the girls, the guys from the fishermen district who were being in battle, and the straw hat pirates. Humans always have reasons to kidnap mermaids. In the human world, young mermaids can be sold off for hefty prices, which I just said earlier. And still though, we can't suspect them, un we can't suspect them unsparingly. Uh, do you have any idea how many pirates have come through here getting close to mermaids without innocent, with innocent looking faces only to kidnap them and leave? And, um, uh, the prince, the princes, uh, come, come to, uh, Madame Shirley, and, um, uh, Prince Fukuboshi's like, Ma and Madame Shirley, what you said earlier, did you really see that kind of future where Straw Hat Luffy destroys Fisherman Island? And um, uh, Madam Sherry, she's like all shocked and stuff. And one of the mermaids gives her water to drink. And she's like, yes, I really saw it. I, I saw what's the truth. And Fukubo, she's like, hmm. Well, her accuracy is like, well, her accuracy is like always correct and stuff. When stuff like when she makes a prediction. But it complicates things. So now they're going to have to deal with the straw hats. So I don't know. Are they gonna give them Jimbei's message or something or what? So uh, does that mean they're gonna try and fight the Straw Hats? Maybe who knows? We have to see what happens. But you know, a whole bunch of stuff piling on top of each other in this arc. And we're at the Globally Hills, and everyone's like, "Oh snap! I can't believe the Straw Hats got got invited to the Rugu Palace by King Neptune himself. It's unbelievable." And in this one panel, we see this, uh, we see, uh, Oko Paku, who is this, uh, who, if you read, um, Hachi's cover story, Adventure, you know that she was this, she was this octopus, octopus, mer, 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 fish man, lady, fish woman, that Hachi had a crush on, he tried to propose to and stuff like that, and she's like all angry, so I'm like, Arr. so yeah, nice little Easter egg right there. Or to put in there for us, and um, yeah, uh, King Neptune is on his whale, and the Straw Hats are on the Mag Magalo, the shark they saved, and they they brought and they're being brought to Fishman Island by the shark they saved. Oh, and Neptune's like Neptune, ho ho ho, don't fall off now, and his whale's like ho. <laughs> Luffy's like. What the heck is that old guy sounding so loudly for? And uh, and Papa Oak's like, Stop! How can you be so rude? Damn it, Straw Hat! I'm scared now. I'm scared of you. Because Luffy, you know, Luffy doesn't care about royalty that much. He just he says whatever he wants. He doesn't really let status affect what he says, basically. And um, yeah, Neptune's like. The shark, like that shark, Mag Magalo, is a pet that my daughter loves, like so much. <laughs> he said, like. Before she kept crying and crying over how Megalo hadn't come home, I didn't know what to do with her. It must have been very dangerous getting attacked by a kraken like that. Thanks for the excellent work, guys. <laughs> and, uh, Megalo, and Megalo's making like this sha sha sound. And Luffy's like, she, she, she. It was all just a coincidence, but we're glad we were able to help. And right here, Papa, Papa looks like, huh, the mermaid princess pet, huh? And Brooke's like, hey, Papa, didn't you say that you were best friends with the mermaid princess? Papa's like, shh, shh, shut the fuck up, shh. And uh, Brooke's like, oh, it was a lie. <laughs> it was so funny. It was, it was a lie. It's like, shh. And, um, and uh, what's it? Um, and uh, Usopp says no. He said he's, Usopp said uh, said that um, what's it? He said it's cool for your company to attend as well, so it's bound to be okay. Uh, I don't know what he's saying right there. Wait, 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 wait. No, that's K 
Cammy. Cammy said, um, uh, "Are you sure it's all right for all of us to go to the Ryugu Palace too?" Usopp said, "You know, he said it's he said it's cool for your company to attend as well, so it's bound to be okay." And Neptune's like, "The truth is, I just sent my sons out to get you, but they never came back. So I popped up myself. You know, he's got you know doing a job by himself." And he's like, I'm excited for the banker's menu myself, so I want to start ASAP. And he's like, oh, and I forgot to tell you, but we already found one of your companions. He's already begun drinking, but I told him not to. But it'd be more fun if we all drank together, but he wouldn't listen. And this was like, Zoro? And I was like, Zoro? And, he's, and that dude's like, hmm, I think his name is Zori. It's Zoro. <laughs> He said his name, and he's like, Zori. His name is Zori. And like, no, it's Zoro, you fucktard. <laughs> and that dude's like, uh, that dude says, uh, my soldiers will go find all of your companions and bring them to the castle, so no worries. And it's just like, Nami, did you hear what, Did you hear where they went? And Nami says that uh, Frankie went to go look for a relative of Tom, and Robin went to talk about some important history, so they split up. So, this is pretty interesting. Robin might run into a Poneglyph, maybe. Maybe it's a Poneglyph on Fishman Island. And maybe we might see a relative of Tom on uh, Fishman Island. So, yeah, that sounds very interesting. Can't wait for that. To, can't wait to see how that goes. And I was like, hey, by the way, Grandpa. And Papa jumps on her head and bites her. Like a freaking like a freaking dog, he bites her head. He's like God of the Sea, Master Neptune. Damn it! Ah, uh, Papa needs to relax. He's so obsessed with all the formality and stuff. He needs to chill, really. <laughs> and Nami asks him why is it so bright on Fish Mile, despite the fact that they're ten thousand meters deep in the sea. The sea. Neptune's like. Ho ho ho, it isn't bright on Fishman Island, it's just that a long time ago, fishmen started living on the only place on the sea floor where light shines, and then that place became Fishman Island. The roots of a colossal tree named Sunlight Tree Eve, which transfers light from the surface straight down to the ocean floor reaches down here. Light, you mean, there's a tree whose roots shine for over 10,000 meters? And that dude says, like, basically scholars have made up some kind of logic to it, but it's a really, it was really a holy, mysterious tree whose roots shine for the light absorbs on the surface and also supplies air to the ocean floor through breathing. It's like the boss of the, of the Yarukiman Mangrove at Shabudi. So yeah, basically we get an explanation for the sunlight. It's basically from this tree, which is like next to Fishman Island. And the sunlight that reflects from it, like, reflects lights down there at the bottom, so, yeah. And that too says that if the sunlight shines on the surface, then, we, then it will be bright at the bottom of the ocean, too. And when it's not on the surface, it's going to be night there, too, so. That's basically how it works. But it's a blessing because the sunlight will also allow us to keep on living, so. If something happened to that tree, they would all be fucked. They would all just die. Basically, that's what's keeping them living. And... And Usopp says that this tree must have some kind of connection to the treasure tree Adam, which, which which wood is used to make the sunny. So, wait a minute. Treasure tree Adam, sunlight tree Eve. Adam, Eve. Adam and Eve. Oh, I totally get it. Nice one, Oda. Uh, Adam and Eve, nice. We're going to have a garnet eating uh, thing going on soon. Anyway. Uh, they finally make it up to this tube, which uh, leads them to the, like the upper bubble where the Ryugu Palace is. And oh my God, this is amazing! We <clears throat> we finally we see the Ryugu Palace, and it looks fucking awesome. I must say, it looks fucking awesome. I mean, all the detail, all the detail in this double spread looks amazing. You got this. Huge dragon on the top, it like spins around, and like goes down here. It creates like this little hallway, I think. It's like a hallway. He has a hallway. It's got like this, uh, spires and stuff. Wow, it's so much detail. I just can't put into words. You have to, you have to look at it yourself. It looks amazing. Congratulations, Oda. But wait, 
I don't know. Does Oda do back? Does Oda do buildings? Uh, I think I don't think Oda does build. I think maybe his assistants, uh, assistants do this. But I want to think. I want to say Oda did this. But yeah, it looks really cool. I like it a lot. He got all the all the fish and the coral and the sea life around. So it's very beautiful. I can't wait to see this animated. So they finally made it to the castle. And Luffy's like, "Whoa, this looks like a fun castle. Lots of stuff in it." And like, and Neptune's like, "Well, it, well, yeah, it's my castle. Enjoy yourselves." Ho ho ho. <coughs> and all of a sudden, uh, Neptune gets yelled at by some guy. He's like, "What's got into you? Forgetting the entire position and going outside on a whim again like that? It's outrageous." Going all the way down to the lower sea without taking any sort of guard view. It'd be too late to call them to come to your aid if something happened. You know? You have have you forgotten what sort of situation this country is currently in? And he's like, uh, yes, yes, I'll make sure to take care of hereafter. Um, um hopeful. And it was like, he's getting yelled at. <laughs> and one of the guys is like, boy, oh boy. <laughs> and Luffy smells something, so he's, uh, Smell some food, I guess. And Neptune's like, more importantly, look, I brought the people who saved Magalo when he was being bullied by a kraken. Now, come on, welcome in our guest. Where's the princess? Where's Princess Shirahoshi? And uh, when, the, when the guy's like, well, King, uh, just a moment ago, it happened again. It's like, what? That's because you didn't set her up with the proper guardian in order to set, keep her from getting upset, you don't. And the guy's yelling at him, Do you not understand that you suddenly disappearing during a time also makes the entire castle upset, King? Think a little. Think, motherfucker. <laughs> and he's like, uh, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll really take good care from here on out. Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Please don't hit me. <laughs> and they're like, He's getting yelled at again. <laughs> and the other guy's like, Boy, oh boy. And the guy who's yelling at him is um, this ugly looking seahorse man motherfucker uh, who's called the Minister of the Right. And this other guy who keeps saying, boy, oh boy, is the Minister of the Left, a uh, catfish merman. But he looks more like a fishman than a merman because his it, upper part of his body doesn't look very much like a merman, but I think it's just his hair, I guess. I want to think it's his hair, but <laughs> yeah, it's like also we must truly apologize for bringing up such a matter when you yourself have brought guests to the palace, King. But we have something very important to talk to you. Yes, we have a, we have just received a message from Prince Fukuboshi. Boy, oh boy! Which was like, hmm, Fukuboshi. What did he have to say? Well, the truth is, and all of a sudden, uh, and I'm just like, uh, hey, where's Luffy? And Brooks like, is the banquet ready? Is the banquet ready? And uh, it was, I was like, hey, he was just here a minute ago. Uh, I, he can't even stand still for a minute, can he? And Papa was like, it, what is he doing wandering around this sacred land? Where is he? <laughs> and, um, yeah, we see Luffy wandered off. He's following his nose. Follow your nose. And he smells some food. So he's like, uh, mm, this way. This is where the good smell is coming from. Like, how the smell disappeared? Could it be inside that door? And we see this guard closing his huge door. And uh, he doesn't notice Luffy for some reason. So he's a failed guard. And I don't know. Is Luffy... Is, are they inside a bubble? Because... Uh, yeah, I think they're inside of a bubble. Because I was confused. Because I saw like, this water on the, on the side. I was like, are they inside a bubble? Yeah, I think they're inside a bubble. Anyway, um... Like, could this be the entrance to the banquet? That guy said that Zoro already got here. But what a big, thick, strong-looking door this is. These walls look real sturdy, too. It's like the walls didn't pile down. Just how delicious can the food inside there be? And Luffy's stomach is doing a thinking for him again. And we see, like, all these knives and axes and the door and shit. So, I think Luffy's like, Luffy doesn't even notice the knives and the axes. So, he just fall on his stomach. And he opens the door, and inside is uh, pitch black. It's like, this isn't a banquet hall, but there's some food that smells really good. So he runs off to get to the food, and it's like his stomach's already at its limit. But he's running, and he bounces on something. I don't know what that is, but it's some kind of 
coral basically uh yeah it's like guess there's no coral guess there's coral no matter where you are on this island <laughs> and luffy's like you know bouncing on top of it he's like what is this stuff i mean it's so soft i mean whoa what is this like what is this he's like bouncing up and down on it so like whoa hey did someone just say something <laughs> this this coral's like put in and we hear like this weird sounds and like uh, and it'll be like bouncing up and down on this uh whatever it is <laughs> and we hear okay is there someone in here and lights turn on Luffy's like wow what is this and uh, it turns out that Luffy was jumping on a pair of titties. <laughs> yeah, so Luffy was jumping on a pair of giant titties. <laughs> and it, and it's the mermaid princess, um, Princess Shirahoshi, who's big as fuck. Who's huge. I, I don't know how the heck anyone's going to tap that, unless you're a giant, I guess. We well, can't really tap it because she's a mermaid, so... But even if she wasn't a mermaid, it'd probably be hard to tap that anyway. But yeah, we see this. She's hot, I must say. Uh, uh, big, big and beautiful. Yeah. Um, she's crying stuff like, "What do you think you're doing on someone else's body? Like, who in the world are you?" And it'd be like, "Whoa!" So that was a huge person or a huge mermaid. And she looks a lot like Nami. I pretty sure people have said this, but she looks a lot like Nami. It's one of those rare occasions where oldest females tend to look like tend to look like other characters. I mean, Oda could draw so many so many females, but you know, every once in a while they're probably gonna end up looking like other females in the series. <coughs> Cough. It's like, have you come here to take my life as well? But I'm not scared one bit, you know, because I'm the daughter of Neptune. I'm not. I'm. I'm not scared. <laughs> Someone, father, brother. <laughs> She's crying, and Luffy's like dodging her tears and stuff. Luffy's like, hey, hey, I'm not doing anything. What's going on? So yeah, she's uh crying for some reason. I don't know. And uh, that's the end of the chapter. So yeah. It'll be uh, doing some titty bouncing. That's not the first time he did that. I remember, uh, let's see what happened. Uh, yeah, Amazon Lily, uh, he was run away from the Amazons and he ran to that giant uh, Amazon chick's boobs and she like hit, bounced him back. Uh, what, what was the name again? Uh, Alphalandra or something? Yeah, he bounced into her boobs and, like, and he fell backwards and stuff. So, Luffy's basically like a boob magnet. Anyway, he he like he didn't even know what they were. If that was Sanji, he would have just had another nosebleed explosion fountain, and he would have except it would have been bigger, and he would have died instantly. So yeah, thank thank God Sanji is not here at the moment, because he would have died instantly. So yeah, that's the end of chapter, and uh, pretty cool and. We got some, uh, uh, it's like a whole bunch of pictures and stuff. And we got some one, we got some one piece, uh, collectible, not collectibles, like, it's those one piece, like, uh, time skip, uh, paper cut figures, figures and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, is, it, is this like the first time skip, like, uh, figures and stuff? Yeah. This, this is the same boat that was on the cover. So you could cut out your own uh sunny go and like make it if you want to. I would do that, but that takes too much time and I'm too goddamn lazy. So yeah. Looks really cool. A anyway, um that's the end of the chapter. And what will happen next? Was Luffy gonna go go bounce on the titties again for another for a second time? Who knows? But anyway, this is Math King JC. Keep on keeping on and keep on reading One Piece. Excuse me while I go and read this chapter again. Let's see. I said quit it. Call me.